Hi, my name is George Gant. I'm a cartoonist and the creator of the comic strip Beware of Toddler. You can find me at comicskingdom.com dash Beware of Toddler and Beware of Toddler on all social media platforms. You're watching and listening to Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We are joined today by a returning guest. He has been on the show. It's been a couple of years since he was last on. He is, of course, a very talented comic creator. You know his work from Reset Button and, and of course, Beware of Toddler. We're joined by the ever-talented George Gant. How are you doing today? I am doing well. How are you today? Doing good. You know, coffee's been flowing all day, so that's always a good day, right? Oh, yeah. I got mine right here. <laughs> See? And your branding as well. <laughs> <laughs> That was a coincidence, I swear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, for those that, that never had a chance to watch the last interview, and shame on them, tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking today. My name is George Gant. Uh, I am a Chicago-based cartoonist, and I am a creator of the comic strip Beware of Toddler. It is, um, it's a comic strip about a stay-at-home dad basically trying to survive daily life with a two-year-old. Obviously, it has no resemblance to real life whatsoever, I'm sure, right? Like, it's not like a write what you know? No, it, it's completely written in, uh, with AI and <laughs> chat GBT and all of that. I, I've had no real world experience <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we're, we're kidding. You're, you're a wonderful father and, of course, a very creative person. And of course, dealing with children, I'm sure, is very rewarding in, in itself because they're behind you. So... <laughs> <laughs> always uh, if you see me like if you see me like look over there they're they're nearby <laughs> you know since we last talked you of course have been working on beware of toddler you've had a, a great surge of popularity and of course you're making still amazing comics between the series itself plus i love your pinups that you do when you bring mm -hmm. the pop culture into your world and i think that's just incredible and it's so beautiful to see because i love the final versions that you've done but a new thing has cropped up since we last talked and that is being picked up by comics kingdom you got to talk to us about that yes yes um beware toddler is part of the uh, king features umbrella on uh, comics kingdom it'll be two years in june like i i didn't go around pitching a comic it's kind of weird it's that um I, I think they were looking to like expand their uh, comics portfolio and they reached out to me. Like I wasn't going to say no. I gladly accepted. Uh, this was right, like, right around the time of when the book came out. Mm. I said, yes, June, 2022, Beware Tyler was up on comics kingdom on, um, on their website. And then uh, the following January, Beware Toddler got picked up by papers, thus becoming an actual syndicated comic. Oh, congrats. Thank you. That's amazing. Which papers picked it up? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm I'm afraid to ask. I'm afraid to ask. I, I don't think there are uh, many because I, I, I haven't been able to find any. I haven't been able to track any down on my own. The newspaper industry is kind of in a strange place as it is with like comics and things like that. I don't know where my strip is, but I do know it's somewhere. It's out there some somewhere sometime, you know, just like Frank Beckett from, you know, Quantum Leap. It's just somewhere in time there. Somewhere. I'll find it. Unlike Frank, I'm going to figure this thing out. <laughs> Sorry, Sam Beckett, I should have said mm. that. <laughs> I, I mean, it was bugging me. I, was like, I knew Beckett was the last day. But, uh, <laughs> the comics has evolved. You've evolved as a creative person. You know, How have you improved yourself and your creativity with Be Aware of Toddler and your art style in these last couple of years? Well, with me, I think it's... I don't feel like it's more like evolving as much as it's... I feel like I'm like getting myself organized, like as a creator. And I'm pretty sure I, I believe I've mentioned this last time. I used to go about it by like just making the comics kind of like on the fly, like an improv thing, just like out of nowhere. And then I'll just draw everything in as I just make it up on the spot. Nice. You can't really do that with, with newspaper comics. We have to uh, produce them several weeks in advance. Mm. I think five weeks is like the, the minimum or something like that. There's more planning. I've got to think ahead now. Not so much just write and draw what comes in my mind at that given moment, but, you know, let ideas, you know, stew, let ideas fester. Uh, the art itself, I, I feel like back then, like back with the webcomic things, I was just, I never gave myself the time to really create a style. Mm. Because, you know, I made that first comic and then it became popular. 
So I didn't really have the time to do so. You know, over the last couple of years, like especially with the King thing, I really started like fleshing things out a bit more. With the art itself, I started relying less on like brushes that I like buy online. And I started you like creating my own. I, I figured out how to do that. Lately, like I started trying to figure out how to like, you know, incorporate the text, make sure the text is a part of the art, which, you know, I was doing, you know, whenever, whenever I do like actual comics work and not my own comics, but now I'm trying to, you know, even the text in my voice. So like a couple of weeks ago, I was just playing around and I started like playing around with like creating my own fonts. Mm. So, I mean, that's literally where I am right now. It's just, you know, I try to make up my own fonts. Everything else is just, I just feel like the natural progression now that I've given myself the time to try to flesh out these characters and the scenarios in the world. Um, and I've got way more like in mind, like so much more that I want to do, but everything else is just like what I feel like the natural progression of things should be as well as the natural progression of my own abilities as an artist, because I'm, I'm like constantly at the table now, just uh, creating these comics and really having to think about it as opposed to, I sketch this up and I just put it out there, you know, 10 minutes after I drew it. The fact that you're actually now expanding into making your own brushes and making your own fonts, I think that's a great step in the right direction as a creative person, because I, I think a lot of times if you're working with a team, you have someone kind of doing that. If you're not the, if you're the writer and not the artist, but the fact that you're doing everything at once, you're, you're kind of having to streamline your process to make yourself more efficient. It sounds like. Yeah. I mean, um, I mean, you you have to, um, because you've got to think about the deadlines. You've got to think about, you don't want to sacrifice the quality of your work for deadlines, but at the same time, you know, you've got to make them with me, like with the fonts and the brushes and things like that. Well, I'm a computer's guy at heart. Like even like beyond the cartooning, if I wasn't drawing cartoons, I'd be, you know, doing something computer related. I, I, I built my computer myself uh i build computers for fun i i enjoy things from the hardware and the software side so figuring out how to do things and then doing them to me is as fun as the drawing itself so you know it's it's almost like a hobby so i don't really mind it so much it just it just happens to work out in my favor that way the fact that you have to be aware of the deadlines and the fact that you're trying to flesh out your stories are you going into more current events with the comics itself? Are you trying to plan out like the life of the characters and then current events kind of feed their way into it? Or are you just trying to make it just a fun comic as a whole? Um, ultimately, I, I want to just make it a fun comic because my goal for the comic is to have, I want everyone to read the comic. I don't care if you're six or 60. I don't care what color you are. I don't care about any of that stuff. I want you to enjoy the comic. But at the same time, if there is a topic that comes up that resonates with me or is important to me or that I relate to, especially as a father of color, there's a stigma going around, like that's going around forever that we aren't good fathers or we're absent fathers. And that's completely not true. So if there's something for me to address that, I will. But ultimately, I just want to have fun. I want my readers to have fun. We've got enough going on in, in this world right now. Like, it's okay to take a few seconds out of the day and just, you know, enjoy life, even if it's a stressful toddler, you know? Other than that, I, I try to do things in, relate, in like relation to holidays. Nothing crazy or nothing out there. I'm not going to get religious with anything because that's too much of a hot button issue for someone. Little knots here and there. Easter Bunny here. Easter Bunny's fine. Santa Claus is fine. Mm -hmm. WrestleMania is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And without going to uh, spoiler territory, my next comic is wrestling related. So <laughs> just like things like that, that I, I, I'm i cool with doing. Do you have a, a favorite for the main event there? Oh, man. I, for the main event. At this point, like, Cody can't lose. Like, I, it would look so bad if Roman Reigns retained. But at the same time, like, I love everything that's going on with the bloodline. So it's, it's like, like Cody has to win. But I'd get it if Roman retained. It, it's where it's like um, you want the bloodline story to continue, but at the same time you feel like Cody's story is going on too long. Yeah. And like, how do you get around that? It's it's the question. Even if he wins, though, that still continues his story. It's not like they're going to ship him to another division or you know relegate him to like a lower, you know, AEW type thing. It's not going to happen. Like, well. 
that's that's true. Um, I, I guess if you give it to Cody, Roman can try to get it back, or you can do something like involving a rock. But uh, mm -hmm. even at the, I believe they said yesterday that he's going to film a movie right after this weekend. But I mean, they, there are ways they can they that it can go. Like I'm just excited. I'm looking forward to it, man. <laughs> It's it's something I haven't had a chance to really watch in a while just because of the show, but I think it's just something that's like you take the entertainment value for itself. Besides the storyline, the the in the ring performances and the action and just the physicality of it is just incredible. Just to to watch. No, no, I agree wholeheartedly. I was a fan as a teenager, and I was, and um, I grew up a bit, and I got away from it, and then I rediscovered it about ten years or so. So I try to watch it when I can. My wife, like I've gotten her into it. Uh, my daughter, uh, she loves like Bianca Belair, so she'll see her whenever she comes on the TV. So it's 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 become one of those things that we just do in the house. I don't watch every single week. I can't because it's, there's always something to do. But I do follow the storylines enough to know like what's going to happen. And of course, WrestleMania weekend, we we sit down and we watch that, of course. My, my next goal is like I've uh, I've got a twelve year old son too. We're yeah. trying to get him. Oh. It, it's a challenge, but we will we'll get there. Now he's more into the gamer space. Okay. Uh, I mean, I am too, but I'm willing to watch wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> it's these types of family uh, gatherings that you have to enjoy and you know times together, whether it's dinner or watching television together. You know, you gotta gotta enjoy those life experiences because time is fleeting and you know family is not always forever so you know you got to enjoy that oh yeah it's good that you're immortalizing everything with with your comic as well and whether it's true to life or whether it has a, a tinge of fiction in it obviously i think is a great thing to have storyline wise that you can actually hint at because i don't want you to spoil anything is there any any storylines that you're really excited about showing the the fan base of toddler. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind saying it because I think I've said it before, but ultimately I want to just expand um like, you know, and just do things outside of the house. My ultimate goal, um I don't know when I'm going to do this, but I want to introduce other toddlers into the mix. Nice. I don't want it to just be horror. I want to see, like, you know, what happens if you take these characters and, you know, put them in scenarios with other, like, you know, friends. You have to have friend groups. You have to have things like that. And I'm I'm just trying to figure out how to do so. My biggest challenge is the fact that the comic only runs on Sundays. And I'm kind of, kind of afraid to do, like, an ongoing storyline for a Sunday strip. Like, will people remember what happened last week? Because it's been an entire week. I want to do like other toddlers. I've got other characters that I've created that I would like to um to you know incorporate there, like different archetypes and things like that. Um, ultimately, what I what I would like is for like every like main um area like setting to give off like a, a different vibe in a sense. Hmm. So like you've got Beware of Toddler when it takes place at home. In my eyes, it's like Tom and Jerry. Mm -hmm. In this new setting it would be more along the lines of like rugrats or muppet babies and then you know the other family members they've got their own circles and i i kind of want to expand there um one thing i did that i haven't talked about is i i gave the characters names uh -huh. well not so much the toddler but like you know originally you know it was actually it was directly based on my own life um and over time i tried to separate like my own life from the strip so I started like changing things around with the design and the look and I've gave I've given them individual names which I've never told anyone. If you want to know what they are, yeah. you have to find them. Oh. They're written somewhere. I won't say where. Oh. But they're written somewhere. <laughs> Tease. But, um <laughs> I right, I'll I'll throw this one piece out there. The family's last name is Glover. I'll actually send a prize to anyone who can guess why I chose that name. But uh, yeah, uh, so that's something I would like to do uh, down the line. I'm just trying to figure out how to do so and how to make a compelling storyline that could be told across Sundays. Funny thing, and <laughs> my best friend's last name is Glover. They're Scottish, uh, French-Canadian uh, mix. Well, mainly Scottish, but it's beside the point. So I'm thinking for, for your comic, I'm either thinking Danny Glover or Donald Glover. Damn, okay. Well, you know, I tried. 
<laughs> All right, well, I guess I could say it. No, no, no. If, if, if... Okay, no, okay. I won't. I won't say it. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's wild. It's wild how I got to that point. But um, okay. so yeah, the Glover family or whatnot. So that's pretty much well uh, where I'm at. What I'm trying to do uh, with the comic in the near future. It almost sounds like you have to go the peanuts route when it comes to say school or introducing it to preschool or introducing to, you know, uh, parks or or whatever as kind of a way to introduce these these new characters as a possibility. Or maybe it's a neighborhood party or something. You know, parents finally want to get away from their kids. You know, I'm sure you have ideas, but oh, no, I I do. I uh, I have ideas. Um, yeah, just have to figure out how. How was the question? But yeah, I, I definitely want to, you know, expand. Um, you know, you got this wild two year old. What happens if you put her with a bunch of other wild two year olds? Is, is she the straight guy in the group, or is she just as wacky as everyone else? That's going to be a fun thing to explore. See, and here I thought it was going to be like an escape from New York or a situation or something like that with the with the toddlers or whatever. <laughs> well, funny thing you said. I I did a, a throwaway joke like uh, years ago. Where uh, where the dad put like the toddler like a daycare type thing, and it was just this one comic, and he put her there. She was all afraid, and then he came to pick her up, and it was like Mad Max, and it was like the daycare teacher was like it was like the uh, the master blaster thing from uh, yeah. Beyond Thunderdome, and so I I, I thought that <laughs> before, but that was like a long time ago. It was just like a one off joke that I just thought was funny. <laughs> Well, I can't wait to see the possibilities when it comes to this actual uh, revelation of the new toddlers and the situation that occurs from that. And because you're in on Comics Kingdom, does that affect like your release schedule for social media or are you are you only beholden to Comics Kingdom to release your comics? Like what what's the flexibility between the social media side of things and the the website? When I first started, um and and I asked them like, is it okay if I just if I just post the comics on my social media? And they were like, yeah. What I would do is like, I the comics would show up on Comic Kingdom, and then I just post them separately on my uh, on my uh, social medias. I don't post to my main website anymore because I, I want the Comic Kingdom page to kind of take that place for now, and for my main website for me like the older comics and like news and things like that. Lately, and like with the Comics Kingdom uh, overhaul, I've been trying to redirect uh more people there through social media now the biggest challenge is when you have links and you have social media social media tends to bury links it's been a bit tough to try to transition over there but i found a bit of a medium is where i just like post a comic just flat out on toddler's facebook and instagram pages mm -hmm. and then everywhere else i just uh, pop the link but ultimately i just want people to go to Comics Kingdom, that people to know to go to Comics Kingdom, add it to your favorites, read it here. You know, you can read it here. You can read it, um, USA uh, USA Today .com comics. There are other places you can read it. But if it wasn't for the fact that social media buries links, I just do that all day long. The other way I found more recently is with stories. That's been an easier way to get links active for at least a 24 hour period to go towards a website. I've been doing that a lot with uh, some comic clients that the services that I have here, and it's actually driven a lot more traffic towards websites because of that quick hit and whatever, if it's a, a 30 second video or a carousel of images in a story, you know, at least it's something that posts you have attached to it will allow you to add a, a link specifically to that particular story. So you can have like two or three in a row and, you know, away you go. Yeah, I've really got to use stories more. <laughs> I'll wholly admit that I don't use them enough. I'm I'm trying, but yeah, that's one of those things I I know I need to uh, do. The one thing I want to bring up here, I know it's a little dated, but it'll it'll work out in the long run. Here is one of the reels you did post on your TikTok was about the Beware of Toddler animated series, which I I thought that was cute, by the way, because that that's how it sounded like in my head. So well done on that. <laughs> that uh, audio respect there is that an actual fact or not because if if it is awesome if it isn't i'm going to be disappointed oh boy okay so that is 100 percent an april fool's joke uh-huh 
so a couple years ago, I did I did, I did an April Fool's joke, uh, a Beware Tyler April Fool's joke about a new uh, sub series called Beware Senior. <laughs> and the idea was instead of like the toddler being two, she'd be like like um, a senior citizen, <laughs> and instead of uh, driving her uh, dad crazy, it would be like her grandchildren. <laughs> And it was it was an April Fool's joke, and like it was strange because people actually wanted it to exist, <laughs> and I, I took it as, hey, this is actually like this is really cool. This was like really fun. Like, how am I going to top this? And then, in my never-ending pursuit to like learn how to do new things, I thought, man, maybe I should animate something. Maybe I'll learn how to animate something. And this was maybe like two weeks before April Fools, <laughs> so I just started like thinking about what I like to do and figure, Hey, if you just do like a simple, like run animation of the toddler running, you can like build around that. And maybe you can make something, you can make something up. What I ended up doing was, so I just learned how to do a running animation. I just watched like YouTube tutorials and just try to figure out how to do it. Like on the spot. Like I've never animated anything before up to this point. And then I just started thinking, Hey, this might be like, you know, funny April Fool's thing. And yeah, I just kept it going. And it got to the point where instead of me thinking, hey, this is going to be such a great April Fool's thing, it was like, I'm having fun doing this. <laughs> like, like I'm like genuinely enjoying myself animating this stuff. So I just kept it up. And then like, I did it like over the course of like four or five days. And then here, I'm done. And then I'll be like, oh, wait, I see something I need to fix. So I'll go back and I'll fix it. I'll, I'll change it. I'll fix it. The animation looks kind of rough. Let me see if I can fix that up a bit. So I went back and I just reanimated everything over again. Somewhere around the time, um, I think that's when like the trailer for like that Good Times reboot came out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to stay positive here, but let's just say that compelled me to do my own trailer even more so. And lo and behold, there we were. I, I finished it uh, like the weekend before April Fool's Day, posted it up. It was weird because I, I thought it would get more traction than it did, like at first. And then I then I made a comment about, I thought this would get more traction. And then it kind of did, right? Right after that. People said it was well done. People really liked the idea. People genuinely wanted it to happen. And to be honest, that's kind of a life goal of mine anyway. As far as an official thing, I, I wouldn't even know how to get that started. I would like to, but as of right now, it is, an, it is an April Fool's joke. It's a fun one, and I've already got next year's April Fool's joke in mind. <laughs> well, I'll try not to be had like I was this time around, but I, I think you're on to something. I'm just going to say that flat out just because the fact that you took the time to learn this skill is... A step in the right direction because that's really how everything gets started for a genuine idea because if you want this to happen you just have to do it and i think that with your skill sets yeah. I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna leave it like that with your skill sets i think i you get it quite easily do this maybe it'll take a couple of years or five years or whatever but at least you're gonna build up to something and then it'll be like hey here's a 20 minute you know the Wear of Twad Toddler animated series, short, whatever. Well, uh, one thing I can't add to that is another reason I did the trailer is was to actually try to drum up interest. See, who would actually want to, like who would want to see it? In my head, I think that Toddler would work well as a cartoon, especially since in my head it's like Tom and Jerry. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I can figure this out. Maybe we could do some shorts. I don't know. I genuinely have no idea, but I. I do know that that feels like that should be the natural progression. Like after I, you know, really get the world up to how I want. But yeah, it, it was so much fun doing that. I mean, I had to rely on YouTube tutorials, but just doing so and just trying to do so, like, was a genuine blast. Nice. Like I, I'm over here, like I'm supposed to do, like, be working on deadlines and other projects. I'm like animating. I'm like, I should be working right now. <laughs> Well, technically you are. You're still drawing the comic. It's just now moving faster than what a 2D image will do. Yeah. <laughs> it was really cool. It was really well done. I still think, you know, the beware of, of senior would be a hilarious future, days of future past type situation. I think that would be interesting. <laughs> Get some time travel involved and. Well, um, when I did that, it was, a, it was just a static image, but now thinking of, thinking on it, I wonder if I could just do like a Sunday's comic and just do it, make it that. 
just like one day just to see what happens. I don't know. Maybe um, I mean I've done that before with a toddler where I'll just create like imaginary scenarios in which she's a different age. <sighs> okay, yeah, I'm gonna have to do this now. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, I just put the bug back into it. Uh, you know, uh, I'm you're gonna do it eventually. I'm just you know forwarding the timeline a bit faster. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I'm in, I'm in. I'm doing this. Awesome. Well, you know, George, I could keep you here all night. I don't want to, but I want to say this ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talk. And I want to thank you so much for being back on the show. Oh man, thank you, man. This is this is fun. I it's been a while since I've done a show too, so this is uh-huh. this is nice. <laughs> hey, you're always welcome back anytime here. Uh, but for those that want to support your comic, of course, toddler and everything else that you do, where can we find you? How can we support you? And of course, where is this on Comics Kingdom? All right. Well, yeah. First and foremost, comicskingdom.com uh, dash beware dash of dash toddler. Comicskingdom.com dash uh, slash beware toddler. Um, you can also follow Beware of Toddler on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, TikTok while it exists, <laughs> <laughs> Twitter while it exists, X, what you, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, beware Tyler practically everywhere. Um, but please, yeah, check it out on Comics Kingdom. Uh, you can add it to your favorites. I'd greatly appreciate that. I, I got to figure out. I'm sure I'm missing places. Yeah, threads. That Yeah, the thing that we kind of go to every five days or so. Yeah, it, It's weird because I actually like threads. I do too. I, I forget that it exists. <laughs> yeah. But it's good. <laughs> I feel like I get more traction on threads sometimes than Instagram. It's kind of crazy like that. Same. I, I me too. Like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talk. You can, of course, find this interview and twelve hundred plus others, including past interviews of George's on the same website, tgtmedia.com or two geeks talking.com. Website's basically being nuked right now. So go to our YouTube channel because you know YouTube doesn't rebuild. YouTube.com forward slash TGT Media. The podcast you can find at two geeks talking.podbean.com. Or just search Two Geeks Talking wherever you get your podcasts. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on Two Geeks Talking. <laughs>